All right, everyone, welcome back to Momentum and Impulse. And today we're going to be talking about elastic collisions. And there's a few things I want to talk about when it comes to elastic collisions that will be important when solving these kind of problems. Uh, first thing to know is that kinetic energy is conserved. So when collisions happen in elastic collisions, kinetic energy is not lost. Okay, so there's, like a, it's, there's nothing that's actually ever perfectly elastic, but we're talking about this concept with elastic collision, and in that case, there is no loss in kinetic energy. Another thing is when objects of the same mass hit, they switch velocities. So what that means is we have a certain mass, and it's going like 5 meters per second, and we have another mass, it has the same exact mass, and it's going 4 meters per second the other way. When they hit, this mass will now be going 4 meters per second this way, and this mass will now be going 5 meters per second the other way. Okay, so they switch upon when they hit, when they have the same exact mass. Another one is when a bigger object hits a smaller object, the bigger object will tend to go in the same direction. That's not always the case, but tend to go in the same direction that it was moving in. The small object will rebound with an even faster speed. So that's what usually happens, doesn't always happen. All right, let's uh, move on, do some exact problems. A particle of mass 4 kilogram, initially moving with a velocity of 2 meters per second east, collides elastically with a particle of mass 6 kilogram. That is initially moving with a velocity of 4 meters per second west. If the velocity of after the collision for the 4 kilogram uh, particle is 5.2 meters per second west, what is the velocity of the 6 kilogram pack, uh, particle after the collision? All right, so let's do this like we always do it. Momentum initial is equal to momentum final. So we have the 4 kilogram before the collision. It's going 2 meters per second east. Plus the other mass, which is 6 kilograms, is going 4 meters per second west. So negative 4. After the collision, we have the 4 kilogram particle going negative 5.2 meters per second. And now we have to figure out what the 6 kilogram uh, mass is going. So we're going to look for this V final here. So we're going to do a little bit of calculation in our calculator. Let's see. 8 minus 24 plus 4 times 5.2 divided by 6. And then what we get is 0 0.8 meters per second. Okay. What is the initial and final kinetic energy of the system? Let's look at this. So kinetic energy initial is going to be equal to one half mass of the first one is four. It first goes with two meters per second before the collision, plus the mass of the other one, which is six, at the beginning is going negative four uh, squared. So let's put that into our calculator. Four times two plus fifteen, and we get fifty-six joules. That's before they crash, they have 56 joules. Kinetic energy final is going to be equal to one half mass, which is four. And then after they hit, it's going uh, 5.2 meters per second. So it's going to be negative uh, 5.2 meters per second plus one half mass, which is six. And then it's going 0.8 squared. Put this into our calculator 0.8 squared times three plus. Oops, this 5.2 is squared. And we get 56 joules. We should have already known this though, because we should know since this is an elastic collision, the kinetic energy is conserved. So before and after the collision, they have the same amount of kinetic energy. Okay. All right, let's move on. Two blocks are on a frictionless surface and have the same mass m. Block 2 is initially at rest. Okay, so what this is, velocity initial is 0. Block 1 moves to the left with a speed of 4v and collides elastically with block 2. What are the final speeds of block 1 and block 4? Oh, sure, I should say block 1 and block 2. <laughs> so what we should know, they both have the same mass, right? And what we should know with elastic collision, if something has the same mass, they're going to switch velocity. So if this is going 4v, after the collision, or maybe I put it, yeah, after the collision, this box number two is going to be going this way with 4V, and then this box would just stay still. You might have seen this in pool, like in pool, when you hit a ball, uh, the ball you hit, uh, the ball that hits another ball stops, but then the other ball takes the speed of that ball. And because pool has a pretty good, it's, it's pretty elastic, the collisions that happen. Okay, all right, moving on. Uh, nice an 1800 kilogram car going 41.7 meters per second rear ends a 5500 kilogram truck going 27.8 meters per second. 
What are their velocities after an elastic collision in one dimension? Okay, so what we should know is that the momentum initial is equal to momentum final. Mm, let me change the color for this. So uh, we're going to do this pretty much how we've been doing the other problems. Momentum initial, which is going to be 1800, is equal to V1, which is going 41.7, plus the other one, 5500. Uh, times it's going 27.8 is equal to 1800 and after collision v1 finals uh v1 final plus 5500 v2 final okay the problem is we don't know what both of these velocities are so that's a little bit of a problem we have let's try to simplify this as much as we can first though so 1800 times 41.7 plus 5500 times 27.8 what we get is 227,420 is equal to 1800 V1F plus 5500 V2F. Okay? So we still don't know these two things, but what we should also know is this is an elastic collision. So as well as momentum being conserved, we should know that kinetic energy is also conserved. Okay? So we should know that kinetic energy is conserved. That being said, since we know kinetic energy is conserved, uh, we could use this formula. Uh, I didn't really show this formula, but this is a formula we can use for only for elastic collision. Uh, we can use V1 plus V1 final is equal to V2 plus V2 final. That being said, let's try to, let's see what we know about this. So V1 is 41.7 plus V1 final. We don't know what it is. V2 is 27.8 and we don't know what V2 final is. But now what we have is we have these two unknowns, but what we also have is we have two equations. So we're going to use substitution. So what I'm going to say is V1 final is equal to 27.8 plus V2 final. So uh, I'm just going to put 41.7 to the other side. So 27.8 minus 41.7. And we get negative 13.9 plus V2 final. So now that we know that, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute and put that in right here. Okay. And now let's see if we can figure this out. I like to always substitute from the simpler place to the more complicated place. So let's see. 227,420 is equal to 1800 times V1 final, which is negative 13.9 plus V2F. We just substituted that plus... Uh, 5,500 V2F. Okay. So now, uh, let's try to FOIL this and everything. So, 227,420, uh, 1,800 times negative 13.9 gives us negative 25,020 plus 1,800 V2F plus 5,500 V2F. Uh, let's bring this to the other side. So 227,420 plus 25020 gives us 25240. And then let's add these two together. So that's going to be 73,000 or oh, 7300 V2F. And now let's do some simple algebra to get the final velocity of the second car. Uh, it's going to be divided by 7300. Uh, 34.58 meters per second. So this is 34.58 meters per second. But still, we want to find what the velocity of this first car is after it collides. So we can just plug it into this formula. V1F is equal to negative 13.9 plus 34.58. And let's see what we get for that. What we get is 20.68 meters per second. Okay. So this is a key thing to know. Only for elastic collisions is can we use this formula V1 plus V1 final is equal to V2 plus V2 final. How we get this formula is knowing that kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy final. I'm not going to show the proof of that, but just know, know about that. Okay. Okay, last one. Example number 28. A 0.75 kilogram billiard ball is thrown at a 0.05 kilogram golf ball. The billiard ball is moving 22 meters per second to the right 
after the billy ball hits the golf ball, the golf ball moves at 54.38 meters per second to the right. So that's after it's hit. With what velocity was the golf ball initially moving? So we want to know what this initial velocity is. So what we should know is, again, we're going to be looking at the momentum before the crash and then after the crash. Okay, so before the crash, we have this golf, uh, I mean, this billy ball, 0.75, going 22 meters per second to the right. Uh, and then we know the golf ball, which is 0 0.05. We don't know what that velocity is of the golf ball. We know after the crash, the billiard ball, 0.75. We don't know what the velocity of the billiard ball is final. But for the golf ball, which is 0 0.05, we know that the golf ball is going to be moving 54.38 meters per second to the right. So let's try to simplify this as much as we can. 0 0.75 times 22, 16.5. And then we have plus 0.05 velocity of golf ball is equal to 0.75 velocity of billiard ball final uh, plus, let's see what this is, 0.05 times 54.38. And we get 2.72. So this is 2.72. Okay. Um, and what we should have learned from the last time, momentum is conserved for elastic collisions, but also kinetic energy is conserved. So we could use this formula, V1 uh, plus V1 final is equal to V2 plus V2 final. So I'm going to just call this the velocity of the billiard ball, which is 22, plus the velocity of the billiard ball final is equal to the velocity of the golf ball, which we don't know, plus the vol velocity of the golf ball final, which we know is 54.38. That being said, uh, we should know that I'm going to put this 54.38 to the other side. So 22 minus 54.38. And we get negative 32.38 plus the velocity of the billy ball final is equal to the velocity of the golf ball. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in right here. Okay. So whenever we don't have two unknowns, we have to use substitution. And so let's do that. I'm going to put this 2.72 to the other side, so 16.5 minus 2.72, and we get 13.78 plus 0 0.05, and velocity of the golf ball, which is substituted, negative 32.38, plus the velocity of the billy ball final. Uh, what, whoops, okay, that's okay. It's equal to 0.75 velocity of billy ball final. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of foiling. So 13.78 plus 0 0.05 times 32.38. And we get negative 1.62. And then plus 0 0.05 velocity of billy ball final is equal to 0 0.75 velocity of billy ball final. Uh, okay, now let's uh, simplify this even more. 13.78 minus 1.62, which is going to give us 12.16. And then I'm going to bring this to the other side. So this is going to be 0.7 velocity of billy ball final. So now I can find the velocity of the billy ball final, which is going to be 12.16 divided by 0.7, which is 17.37 meter, uh, meters per second. But actually, what I need to find is the velocity of this golf ball before. So I can put this into this equation. So I can put negative 32.38 plus velocity of the billy ball final, which is 17.37, is equal to the velocity of the golf ball before the collision. And let's figure out what that is. And we should get around negative 15 meters per second. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I know sometimes substitution can be confusing. So if that was hard, please watch it again. And we'll do one final video next time. Uh, for this momentum and impulse chapter. Thanks for watching guys.